I'm pulling up a lot of the, the uh, dark side of me, but I'm also looking at the guys to my left and to my right, realizing that um, we're here together, man. And I have, to, uh, I have to be strong for them. And they got to be strong for me. A lot of people, either you like me or you don't, even in the SEAL teams, but when you get to that door or you get on that mission or you get in an op, all that shit's out the door, man. You know, you, you do it honestly. I mean, people say all the time in these movies and shit, you, you really out there fighting for that guy beside you. And you can't be a coward. Because you know what? And this is how I look at everything I do now in life, and this sums it up. I hated jumping out of airplanes. I hated shooting guns. I hated the job as a Navy SEAL. But I did it because I wanted to change myself. Mm. Everything I do, I'm not really comfortable doing. But if you choose to go that route, to go be a Navy SEAL, you might as well go be the hardest motherfucker in the world. Because if you're choosing to do something, you have two routes. You can go there and be a little, a little weak person mm. and get through barely, and that's your reputation. Or you can go through the hardest guy you can possibly be, and that's your reputation. So my whole thing is, if you're going to choose to open that fucking door in Iraq or Afghanistan, open the motherfucker and go in hard. Because they're going to remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in. So if you're going to open it, and you made the mind to open it, don't crack it open. Open the fucking door and go in. That's with life. If you're choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it. Because they're going to remember you as not attacking it. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me, but one thing you can't say about me, I didn't attack it. So that's the mentality you have. If you're going to do something, you might as well attack it. Because you can do it anyway. It still works for me in, in life as far as attacking things. Because uh, no matter what I want to, you know, no matter what avenue I choose, I want to be the very best. Mm. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is that I leave everything inside of me out there. So attacking is not like, oh, I want to win this or win that or be the best. The best is I'm, I'm, I'm running against myself and everything I do. And, and, that's, and that's what I attack. I attack myself. I'm always questioning myself. I'm always holding myself accountable. So the accountability mirror is something that I kind of came up with in high school. Like I said, I started shaving my head when I was 16. Mm. And I got caught up in trying to impress so many people because no one liked me. So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. You know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, dog, so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups that when you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So I, th this mirror would always tell me, my, 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 my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note. And I would fix it. So then my senior year in high school, it was a totally different David Goggins. All right, there was a lunch table. That I, you know, I wanted to sit at the cool guy lunch table, man. I wanted to, you know, even though everybody was calling me a nigga all the time, I wanted to, to try to act like somebody I wasn't so I could fit in. And I sold my soul to the devil, you know, trying to act like, no, I'm, I'm David fucking Goggins. That's who I am. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper, fuck the table, sit by your fucking self. And that's what I did. And guess what happened? My table became a table people started sitting at. Because a whole bunch of people in that lunchroom felt exactly like I did. I, I, I had a laundry list of things that I just, I, I, I write down in this fix. So I write it down and fix it. It was funny, man. One, one movie I watched all the time was Rocky. Great choice. Rocky won. And I related to Rocky a lot because of uh, kind of, you know, one of the smart guys, just tried real hard. 
And the one scene that I related a lot of my life to, still to this day, was Rocky one, round 14. And this is where I got taken souls from. If you look at round 14 of Rocky one, Apollo is beating the shit out of Rocky. Rocky falls down in his corner. Mickey's saying, stay down, stay down. Rocky didn't hear a fucking soul. Apollo, after he knocked him down, turns around, hands in the air, like I finally knocked down this animal. Right. Apollo doesn't know it, but Rocky's getting up. Apollo turns around the second Rocky gets up. And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he, Apollo looks at him with a look of like Rocky just took his soul. He, he, Apollo shakes his head, and Rocky has his gloves and emotions towards Apollo. Come on, motherfucker, I'm still here. And this song comes on that I played. So when I brought the, Gimp the um, Ginsburg of Rolls records, it took me 17 hours to do 4,030 pull-ups. I listened to one song <laughs> for 17 hours. Two minutes and 17 seconds. Dun, 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 dun. I listened to that song for 17 hours wow. nonstop on, on repeat. So the image in my mind of a man was not one that had earrings, sagged his pants. I, I, I had this image in my head and I was going to fulfill that. And I, I didn't do any trends. I stopped trending. I stopped being this guy who whatever was new, fuck it, that's not what I believe in. I'm doing this. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm going to be. It's funny you say that. Um, I, I just retired from the military in November 2015. And I was going and going and going and going. And I never really, I was a, a happy guy, but I'm never in the moment of like sitting back and I want to travel here to have fun or do this or do that. Mm. I've never been that person. But the first time I really got a chance to experience true happiness and true peace was I was like, so what I did to myself to become who I am today, it takes a great toll on your body. So I believe God gave me time to rest and he took me out of commission. Not even the mind of Goggins could get me back up. So I had about a good six, seven months where I was out. And when I was out, I had time to reflect on all I'd accomplished. Mm. And that was the first time in my life where I sat back and said, wow. Because only I, I may be telling you some of the story, I know the exact truth of how brutal my life was and how I shouldn't be on this show today and how the mind and how beautiful it is. So what brings me joy and happiness is knowing how beautiful the mind is and I'm one of the few people that didn't read about it, didn't experience it through some, some drug. I got to experience the beauty of true fucking willpower. True fuck you, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, and I will succeed. Just me talking about that gives me a feeling, I know what I did. And I don't need to travel somewhere or to have this or have that. I have it all here in my mind. The beauty is remembering this young, dumb, what people call nigger, is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's forever lasting peace. I, do need, I, I could die right now on this show and I'll be happy, ma'am. So... That's, that's my happiness, is, is, is my reflection on the suffering of my journey, knowing I never quit, nor was I guided by anybody on this earth. I was guided by something much more powerful, and I listened, mm. and I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. Um, so I stretch out every day for at least two hours. I don't drink. I don't go out. My regimen is I wake up, have oatmeal, run, come back, hit the weights. Um, I'm a big sports guy. I don't leave the house if at all but to do stuff like this. And I stress out at nighttime. I find people that I trust, which is a very small group of people, people who are honest and true to me, people who will die for me, and I'll die for them, which is a fucking small sure. 
And everybody else, man, you know, do you. And I stay to myself. And I let you do you. I don't judge people. I don't criticize you. You want to be a douchebag and be an ass and not love this country? Do whatever you want to do? I don't care, man. I fought for this country for you to do you. And I am all about you doing you because I'm going to fucking do me. And I'm going to do me until I'm fucking dead. And I believe I, I earned the right. A lot of people haven't earned the right. It's because you live in this country. I mean, you earned the right. You got you to gotta live a little bit. Live. And then have something to say or shut the fuck up. Well, honestly, I've, I'm blessed enough to have survived the life I lived mm. and to come out the other side with a bunch of knowledge. So hopefully I can help people that believe that they're much less than what they truly are. Help them find greatness in themselves. And greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Mm. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it. You gotta first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I gonna get there now? And that's when I come into play. But first you gotta create your own vision. And then it's not external. It's the, the vision created is inside of you. So until you create that, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody to you. The impact I wanna have on the world is, it's a great question, man. And it's a question that I've been asked many times. And I have several answers for it. But the biggest one is, we're all, we, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan, and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man. We all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it. And to find it because it's out there, but it's gonna take hard work, courage, self-discipline. It's gonna take all the non-cognitive skills. The, all the non-cognitive skills to be great. You know, smart is good, all this stuff is good. That's all cognitive. It's the non-cognitive skills that set you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about.